What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Critiquing Teenagers on the Internet, hosted by me, an adult. Now, in my typical fashion, we will be discussing something that was relevant over a month ago, because why not talk about it when it's fresh, right? I don't need those, those stupid views. Yuck. Now today we're gonna to be talking about the Hype House. More specifically, we're gonna be answering the question, is the Hype House bad? Now I assume some of you guys know what the Hype House is, but if you don't, it's basically this group of TikTokers. And they basically reside in this house where they just spend all day making TikToks and collaborating. It's a similar thing to like Team 10 or the Vlog Squad or whatever the hell Rice Gums House was called. I don't remember the name, it was it was something stupid though, that's all I remember. Ah, the, the Clout House. So yeah, something stupid, just like I remember. <laughs> if we're being honest, Team 10, Two thumbs down, but they seem to be the only ones who have somewhat of an original name. Somewhat. It's still not that original. Now, the Hype House has 19 members, but only four of them live there full time, which honestly sounds like a really good idea. And I'm not saying that sarcastically, I think that's actually like the best way they could be doing it. Because if you have 19 teenagers living in a house, they have to see each other all day every day, and it's also their job, they're gonna fucking hate each other after a month. That's why Team 10 seems to fail every time they have a new roster of people. That and Jake Paul's predatory contracts probably have uh, a little bit to do with that. Now this was started by two of the members, Chase and Thomas. Now Thomas was actually a part of Team 10, I guess. I assume he saw how much growth potential there is to doing something like this, so that's why he does it. So they decided to lease this mansion and just have everyone make TikToks all day. I have no idea how much it costs to lease where they're living, but I can only assume it is in the hundred hundreds of dollars a month, at least. Nor do I know how they pay for it, because from my knowledge, you can't make money on TikTok, and I don't see nearly as many promotional TikToks like I did on Vine. I'm assuming it's something to do with investors, because even though these guys aren't making money, they're worth a lot of money, I would imagine, having 10 to 20 million followers. So who knows? And when I say that you have a group of creators all collaborating together, you think, wow, that's really smart. They're doing a good thing. Until you see the content they make. Let's take a look at one of their TikToks. Put fame, everybody know my name when I come through But don't nobody screaming like you I was having visions with you Doing things, switching lanes in the beamer with you And swimming in deep waters And just like that, you've got 4 million views. While to the naked eye, they're doing nothing. I think to any eye, they're actually doing nothing. Clothed or not. Now, I imagine if you're fans of all of them, just seeing them together, having a good time in a house is good enough for you. But it's just weird seeing how that's really all they do. Now this next TikTok is the first one they actually posted on their official Hype House TikTok. And it's got about as much substance as you would think. The biggest thing is I think that they try to add like some pizzazz by laughing at something seemingly not funny. It's not even like they're trying to make jokes and they just fall flat. There's just nothing funny happening and they're all laughing. I think to show you how good of a time they're having. And hey, they're all matching. That's cute. Now, like I said, only four of them live there. The rest of them just kind of come and visit. Like Charlie D'Amelio, who is one of the biggest people on TikTok right now. She's only 15. She really just dances, but it's crazy thinking of how famous she is at 15. You want to know what I was doing when I was 15? This. Hey guys, what's up? It's Chris here. I'm going to be bringing you a little bit of a rant video. Yes, a rant video. I don't usually do videos like these, but I'm just going to put it out here. I could not imagine having 20 million people watch that. It makes me sick thinking about that. But yeah, you've really just got a lot of these TikToks where they're not really doing anything except standing there and looking attractive. They're not dancing. They're not even really lip syncing. Like they're just, they're doing a little bit here and there, but they're not even doing that. There's no comedy. There's no story. There's, there's just really nothing except a house full of attractive people existing and laughing. I hope more of them realize that they should go off and make YouTube channels or do something else, not in place of TikTok, but more of like an additional thing. Just create something with substance. I don't care if it's a tag video or just a vlog or just something that is a thing. Now, there are a few creators in the Hype House that have branched out to YouTube. We'll get to them in a minute. But now I want to get more into the question of, is the Hype House bad? I don't think so. It may be cringy and kind of silly, but that doesn't make it bad. I, I see far too many people just give shit to these people because they're young and successful. Might I add for not doing much? For example, the NBA and TikTok recently have partnered. They're doing this collaboration thing where they will have exclusive clips and highlights on TikTok for the NBA. And as a part of this, they sent three TikTok girls out to an NBA game to make some totally not cringy TikToks with NBA players. That was a joke. They are pretty cringy. Now, 
Now what I'm about to reference, I'm not sure if it really happened. Whether it did or didn't, the replies to it are also very uh, troubling. It was something along the lines of those three girls asking Russell Westbrook to do a TikTok. And he replied with, fuck TikTok, don't ever ask me to do anything like that again, I'm just here to play basketball. Which seemed really unnecessarily mean, because one, they're there to do a job just like you're there to do a job. The NBA and TikTok is partnered, they are doing a thing where they're supposed to be there making TikToks. It's not like they just ran up to you on the street while you're living your life and wanted to do a TikTok with you. I'm not disagreeing with the statement, fuck TikTok, because TikTok itself is a bit of a shady company, but just in that situation there, it just seems unnecessary. Like I said, I don't know if it's true or not. If it's not true, great. But either way, you've got people in the reply saying stuff like this. Give this man the MVP. I hope this is true. Not the hero we deserve, but the hero we need. If this is true, I have a whole new level of respect for him. All of the sudden, all of the sudden, I'm a Westbrook fan. Just shit like that where it's like, why are you so angry about these teens just doing nothing really <laughs> like even charlie d'amelio that girl i was just talking about she gets so much hate for no reason she's not doing anything problematic she's not doing anything harmful she's literally just dancing if people were saying shit like this to 15 year old me making rants on youtube about bitchy ass girls then i would say you're warranted if 15 year old me walked up to russell westbrook and said hi i'm a big fan and he said fuck you that would be okay that would make sense. I would look back on that and think, yeah, I uh, I get it. So no, I don't think the hype house is bad. Cringy and silly, yes. But I wouldn't put it on my list with olives. Olives, olives are bad. Now, like I said before, there are some creators in this group who have branched out to other media platforms. Like this guy, Alex Warren, who is transforming himself into David Dobrik. Now, if you don't know who David Dobrik is, he's an ex-Viner, now YouTuber, who makes vlogs that are four minutes and 20 seconds long, very quick and snappy, a lot of little bits. He laughs a lot. <laughs> and that's about all you need to know about him. Alex Warren is completely ripping him off. Now, I'm not gonna say that nobody can make vlogs that are similar to David Dobrik's. The thing about David's is they're basically just quick and snappy, a lot of bits. That's not enough for me to say nobody else can do videos like that. But this most recent vlog he did really takes it up to a 10. On February February 17th, around 3 a.m., David posted this, confessing his love for my assistant. Then about 20 hours later, Alex Warren released this. He confessed his feelings for her. Now, I was able to find out the exact time they posted by using a third-party website, so that's how I know, if you're wondering. So either this is just a massive coincidence, or he's very efficient at stealing people's content. Now, while his video is not the exact same thing, it's not a cookie cutter version of it, but still benefit and gain traction from David's vlog through the algorithm. Now I'm gonna show you the beginning of David's vlog and then we're gonna see the beginning of Alex's vlog. Guys, check this out, we're in Times Square. We were randomly walking around New York and we found this. Look at check this. Check this out, check this out, check this out. I'm on the fucking bus! Hi! Guys, Hi! good news, check this out. I'm on a bus! Hi! Yeah! Now let's look at Alex's. Tony the other day had his nudes leaked. Yeah, kind of. Your brother's a saint. He would never, ever dream of even posting, let alone taking. <laughs> it is to a point where he is doing a David Dobrik impression now. The laugh was a big thing. The laugh I cannot do, but he can do very well. And when David talks to the camera, he always laughs at the end of every sentence. Like this. Okay, what's going on guys? Today we're gonna be surprising my assistant with a new car. You see how it was like I was being tickled at the end of every sentence? Alex does that too. Guys, I've been trying to look for new ways to scare my friends and I realized that Alexa has a lot of cool hidden features. And Cobra has a mask to furthermore scare them. They sounded so similar, I had to put this to the test. I put together three audio clips from their videos and I tested my roommate Jesse to see if he can match the clip with Alex or David. Let's see how that went. All right, this is clip number one. Okay, so that's that's number one. Okay, I'm gonna play the, okay. the other two for you. It's number two. Okay, that's number two. No. Oh come on. Okay. So one, two, and three. Which one's David Dobrik and which one is uh is the other guy? <laughs> Are you serious? The my god, uh, I'm assuming the first one wasn't, the second one was, and the third one was? Okay, they were all not David Dobrik. <laughs> really? They were all, all three of them 
were the were the other guy. So you can see I pulled a fast one on Jesse. They were all Alex. Jesse's seen enough David Dobrik videos from my kitchen while I watch them to get a good gist of how he sounds. So yeah, I think the reason why he's copying David Dobrik is because David is probably one of the most successful YouTubers out there right now. And he has a similar situation where he went from Vine, like Alex from TikTok, onto YouTube and is making vlogs. And I think he wants to emulate the success, but he's also just blatantly ripping him off. I would say doing something like this is worse than just dancing on an app, or even just standing around laughing, taking a bite out of your friend's Nutrigrain bar. This is where there's actual problems. And I'm glad that a lot of other YouTubers are talking about this specifically, but until I saw for myself, I could not believe to what extent he's doing it. I don't know, maybe it's not that big of a deal. None of this matters. Anyways, guys, I thank you for joining me on this journey. I wanna say thank you also for a thousand subscribers. That is a big deal. I have never had a thousand subscribers before ever. I had a YouTube channel that I was 10 years old and I did like sub for sub on that and only got to 800 subs. So I did better than old cheating me. But anyways, if you guys did like the video, go ahead and give it a like rating down below. It lets me know that you enjoy it and it helps out the videos. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I post lots of fun stuff on there. It's at Chris the James. And if you're new here and you thought, wow, this is the best video I've ever seen in my life. First off, thank you. No one's ever said that to me before. And also consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell to stay up to date on all of my uploads. Thank you again for watching and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.